Hey there Dango Stu here. Today's video is about sandblasting and getting some primer on the hull of the steel trawler and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. When I was originally on the hard stand with Femex, I spoke to a guy there and one of the yard hands and he recommended I put some Altex paint on the steel boat. I spoke to Altex and one of their local sales guys is coming down now, Dave Brown, to have a chat to me about the types of paint I can use on a steel boat and talk a bit about the process of applying it. So I figure while he's here, we may as well film it and you can learn from it as well. Today I'm talking with Dave Brown from Altex about various coatings we're going to be putting on the boat. So obviously first step is our primer. We're planning to sandblast, uh, but what a primer are you recommending for steel particularly and the why? The Caltech Shot and Boat Epoxy yep. Primer. Yep. So it's the, the first foundation coat, so it's there for adhesion mm -hmm. and it's also there to protect the blast. Yes. And then we can right. come back, we could come back two hours later or we mm -hmm. can come back next week or a month later mm -hmm. and continue on with the, with the system. Them. Right. And in this particular case here we'll be using epoxy fillers. Yes. And after that the epoxy barrier undercoat, at least two coats right. you'll be rolling yes. on or spraying yes. on. Rolling yep. So we'll be rolling on, on yep. so at least two coats. And then we'll have a look and see if we require any of the epoxy surfacer mm -hmm. undercoat as yep. well, which can go on at a half a millimetre thick. Right. And it's quite easy to sand the next day or even weeks yeah. or months later. So we'll be having a look at all of that. Alright. So but uh, let's get it blasted. And we'll have a look at it after that. And so you're saying, so if we blast, obviously I might need to do a few repairs, but then in order for the blast not to flash rust, uh, we've got things like uh, whole blast we can use as a passivator, but then you're saying once you get, the idea is to get that first coat of epoxy on as soon as possible. That's, that's right. And then so, you do have a while before you can continue to overcoat the epoxy? Yeah, so with the, the preparation will be abrasive blast cleaning in accordance mm -hmm. with the Australian standard. Yep. So that means within four hours of the blasting, we'll right. be putting on the, the, primer. the, the epoxy primer. Yeah, that's, yep. that's correct. Yeah. Once the epoxy primer's on there, we've got um, days, weeks, uh, yeah. up to a month before we have to right. go Right, so a month's there. about your maximum overcoat time? Oh, we could even go longer. Right, okay. Yeah, that's that's fine, but uh, we can get dirt and all that on there. So yeah. as long as the surface is clean, clean yeah. we're, we're happy, but yeah. we don't like to say to go out too far, but it's, yeah. got a, it's got a good extended window. And your first coat, do you thin it? Would I be just putting it straight on? Or? Most of the products are designed to go on. Go with, straight on? With, okay. Without thinning. Yep. But um, judicial thinning of, you know, five or 10% is quite, quite fine. Right. And would that be more to make it easy to apply or to help it go into those little just some crannies on the first coat? Just to help it um, to apply, but the epoxy primer is designed and, and is quite, um, quite thin yes. to go on there. So right. we're looking at around 50, 75 microns, right. which is what's achievable with, with a roller. Right, so as a single coat. As a single coat, gotcha, yeah. get in there on the adhesion. Yeah. And with a steel vessel, that's the peaks and valleys of the blast, so we'll yes. have all those covered. Right. Yeah. Um, and a very similar system to what we do with fiberglass. Fiberglass as well, yeah. And is it a similar primer for steel? Is there anything special about steel primer or it's all... No, so this primer is um, used for steel, fiberglass. Everything, right, yeah, okay. That, that's right. Okay, no so it's, uh, it's with the epoxy barrier undercoats that go on there, mm -hmm. it's resisting the moisture going through the system. Yeah. So it's the best on the market for the yeah. osmosis protection. Right, yes. Well, yeah, exactly. Osmosis in glass and exactly. rust in steel and, and salt steel. getting yeah. so we're keeping yeah. the moisture away from the substrate yeah. yeah and the epoxy barrier undercoat is the key there all right and the epoxy primer is our adhesion coat for yep. the system so if i do my first coat of the epoxy primer as soon as i can after blasting now is there an optimum time for like a chemical bond rather than a mechanical bond with epoxy coats like if i so, oh, yes, so with the epoxy primer, we could go on after two hours. Right, okay. So go, you can and, do a second coat and quite quickly. And go straight quickly. on with the high build, yes. Okay. So if we were doing a plastic boat, yep. fiberglass, uh, but yeah, we'd be putting the primer on and then the top coat after after two hours. Right, okay. Oh, as in going through, rather than just multiple primers, yeah. you can actually even go into your that, undercoats. That's and going your... through the right, system. Okay. Next day, another coat of barrier undercoat yep. and then the anti -fouls. So yep. fiberglass boat's quite easy. Yep. Gel coat is uh, really only just the one coat it's normally required right, okay, if you're commissioning yeah. a new one yeah, because okay. they, they, they claim the gel coat to be 
uh, you know, osmosis proof. Proof, right, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, no steel vessel, this is going to require a lot of work, so we're just yes. going to do step by step. Yes. First one, abrasively glass clean to the yes. Australian standard. Yep. And then the epoxy primer applied within four hours of the mm -hmm. blast. If for any reason you could only do half, well, we put down the curtain, we paint that, and then continue on the, right, the next yes. day with the blast. So, if, for example, you're in a situation, obviously, sandblasting's the, you know, the gold standard sort of thing. If you had a boat sandblast and you went, oh, there's a big hole there, I'm going to cut that out, put a patch of mild steel in, uh, with, um, say, like a uh, mill scale or something on it still, is there, and you couldn't get it sandblasted for whatever reason, is there a technique that's recommended to get good adhesion if you haven't had a patch or a small section sandblasted? If you can't get it sandblasted, then we'll use Ultralock 576. Oh, okay, so, so it's a different product. Different product, okay. out of our commercial marine. Right, okay. Um, and where you can't abrasively blast, yep. we'll power tool and yep. grind. Right. Yep. And uh, automatically you've got flash rusting. Right. And um, yep. Ultralock 576 is the key for that one. Oh, okay. And that uh, and that product's kind of compatible, it can overlap with the section that was blasted. So oh should... yes, so right. essentially it is epoxy. Right, yeah. It's 100% epoxy. Yep. Uh, it's uh, got great um, low viscosity, right. so it can go into uh, gingered rust right. and turn everything into epoxy. Right. And we can continue from there. Uh, I think I remember us talking about this. So this is a section, so a bit like you might have um, epoxy soaking into fiberglass cloth. It's a similar idea, is it? Exactly, and that's right. where you can use that as well. Right, any, okay. Any, any porous surface. Any porous surface. The okay. better the preparation. The better the results. The better the yeah. result. Okay, that's good to know. So, sandblasting we're definitely doing, and then so, we've got our under, epoxy. Uh, epoxy, epoxy primer. Hang epoxy on. primer. Part A. Part A. Part A. So it's a four to one mix. This is the one I'm going to be using on the boat. So we'll be doing that straight away. Uh, I'm doing a bit of pad welding on this boat because there's some reasonably large divots. But then when we finish, we also have a one-to-one -one spot filler. My idea with this is wherever the area is not significant or structural enough to, to bother pad welding, I'm just going to use this to do a bit of a skim, just to give it a slightly, to lift it aesthetically rather than being a sort of a structural fix. Then you're saying if we uh... then everything will then the epo epoxy barrier undercoat yes so right that's that's the key and at least a couple of coats of that because mm -hmm. we're rolling on if we were yep. spraying we could achieve higher dry thick, film thicknesses right, okay because the coating's atomized so spraying can achieve right. does achieve higher thicknesses gotcha but roller we just simply need to put another just put another coat on to put it. another coat on epoxy barrier undercoat. The other one is the epoxy high build surfacer. Yep. So this is, uh, it's like a sprayable fairing compound, gotcha. but we have to be careful that we don't exceed because the dry film thickness, because there yes. is solvent in there. Yep. But we can apply that at over 700 microns right, to achieve okay. yep. a 500 micron dry film thickness. Dry. Right, so it'll shrink as it dries. Yeah, from well, the seven yeah to so the five. no shrinking, but the, um, the, oh, the, evaporation. the solvent evaporates, evaporates from gotcha, it. Yeah. So it's key to that, there is no shrinking or that. Right. Right, yeah, okay. Product, yep, so yep. Never it's just the loss of the mass through evaporation. No. And both these products are usable above and below the waterline, yes. obviously. Yes. So if I was doing the hull and we've got antivalor to a certain point, yes. I would be doing um, primer just all the way up. In this case, we're starting with the bottom, but it'd be primer all the way up to the sponson. And then we could use you can, you can ba use same barrier coat. Same barrier coat. Same everything. Same surfacer. And then everything sealed off with the barrier undercoat mm -hmm. again, especially if we're using the surfacer. Yes. So um, with, with, with the barrier undercoat, uh, it has the ability to be lightly sanded and that right as well. As so well. When right. we're finished up here, yep. we can put the two-pack polyurethane on, which we'll come to later. Yes, the as we get to that stage. Polyurethane. <laughs> Looking forward to that. <laughs> and, and directly onto the antifoul. So the final coat yep. of epoxy barrier undercoat in the morning, we'll be putting the antifoul on that day. Okay, so right, okay, so do your final coat then antifoul straight then away as a chemical bond once again. Straight away, and we'll run through that, that's the thumb test, so right, what we'll okay. find is that we'll put it on there, it's still uh, fingerprints yes, but it's not sticking to the thumb. Right, okay. Ideal time to go on, we've got a chemical bond. Yes. And with the chemical but you're bond, not you, gonna you haven't got mix the flake, them. you haven't got yeah. the flaky antifoul issue yeah, that you right. see on some vessels. Right, okay. Some people may go, oh well, we left it a day. Yes, right. Wrong thing. Right, too long. Too long. Too long. Interesting. Okay. And the other question I've got, which we'll obviously get to when we get to it, but so there's obviously an interface where your your nice shiny blue stops and your antifoul starts. Uh, generally, as a technique, do you carry your top coat for the hull down past that line or? 
can so so we'll be um, no, no we'll have a uh, we'll have a line there where we're yep. bringing up the antifoul up yep. to that area polyurethane above the water line yep. so trying to get that line will be the so key. they don't overlap at all you just simply have them butted that they'll butt together but yeah. the but the uh, the foundation the epoxy system all goes across all, all, go, yeah, goes across goes across all, all does right, all the protection okay. yeah. um, the polyurethane for aesthetics yes and even the antifoul is uh, sacrificial yes and with your antifoul how long can it be out of the water before it likes to oh, and again that's uh, nice and user friendly so that can be left out of the water as well if it goes in for weeks and months what yes. we suggest is that we give it a hose before it goes in okay perhaps even a light broom right okay uh, that just activates the surface because right, they, okay. they can get a little bit crusty. Right, straight away okay yeah. interesting all right but and what type of antifoul can you use on steel, and what is there any you can't use on steel? No, it's only aluminium where right, we okay. use the where we use the vivid antifoul, right. specifically designed for aluminium. Yeah. Uh, number five, which is our tropical grade, on this particular one because yep. it may be going into that area. With oh, the, definitely we're going north. With, so, with, yeah. and, and barnacles yeah. and that. Yeah. We'll be putting the number five plus on there. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much for your information. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> I certainly needed it. Right, yeah. That's okay. All right, and. Uh, I'll talk to you again once we've got our blasting done. Episode 2. <laughs> Alright, thanks. thanks Dave. Bye. I finally got my little stack of discs for doing the repairs. Turned out they were already here, they'd actually just gone to the workshop rather than to the island. What I'm going to do is put them in from the outside, just put my magnets across here to hold them in position, then weld them out on the inside first, then I can come outside, grind any sputter off and weld the outside. The advantage to doing the inside first is that you're doing your grinding on the outside rather than the inside, so it makes things a bit cleaner. Step one though, before welding this kind of thing in, is to try and psych the boat out. It makes the job go much smoother. Alright, what I'm going to do now is pop one of our little discs in and just use these magnets to hold it in place. Well, there it is. I actually put two on to hold it steadily. So let's go inside, grind the paint off and start welding out the inside. The trick with grinding the paint off this boat is it's actually got a really tough grey epoxy primer so you've got to make sure you don't mistake that for metal. This is the paint, this is the epoxy primer, this is bare metal. This section here is the first part where the thin metal extends quite an area, it's sort of about here. I did my traditional hole, I've done a few already that way. But you can see it's still thin at this edge and here, 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 here. So this is the first bit I'm actually going to cut a larger square patch out. Alright, I wire brushed the whole area, got a sense of how big the corrosion was, and I've made a patch large enough to cover it. Now I'm going to trace around the patch and mark the area I need to cut. Normally you would do it the other way around, but I've got no one to really hold the patch inside, so I think this is the best way for me being here on my own. All right, we've probably come a bit further this way than we need to be. I can feel there's a rib just inside here, so I don't need to go, well, I can't go any further that way easily. Uh, I'm just gonna go and have a quick look inside, just make sure we are clear of any other, you know, fittings, whatever, and then we'll uh, cut this out. I'm not sure if there's enough light for you to see, but this is the rib I could feel from the outside, and we're completely clear all around this area, so I can get the grinder out and safely cut this patch out. All right, so this is the hole cut out. I drilled the corners with that 13 mil drill bit again. So I'm going to grind the corners of the patch round, then we'll test fit it. Looks like I'm gonna have to do some grinding along here just to get it to fit properly, but it'll be kind of, you know, grind, test, grind, test until it's a good fit. Oh, here he comes, getting exciting. Luke, how are you, mate? Hi. So Luke's about to head off. Sandblaster's hull actually looks pretty good. A few little spots, but to be honest with you, nothing you couldn't see before because the areas that are pitted are the areas where the paint wasn't. Wherever the paint was, the steel's in great condition. I'm now going to do a whole blast pressure wash, which is one of the chloride products, which will both get the dust off as well as stop it flash rusting. Then I'm going to put the epoxy primer straight on wherever the steel's good, 
wherever there's a bit of work I need to do, whatever, I'll just go around that area, I'll fix it, then I'll prime later. This is the chloride for getting the salts out. I did one of their salt tests, which I'll go through in a second as well, and the salt level is actually quite low, so I'm gonna save this for when I wet blast the engine room, but I am gonna put the whole blast to stop it flash rusting, because there are some areas I'm not gonna to paint today, and I don't want those flash rusting over the next couple of days. So this is what I'm gonna wash the hull down with now. Hull blast gets applied at 50 to one, whereas the chloride was 100 to one. So what I've got, is a salo bin here which has 200 litres of water in it. I'm going to then add four litres of the hole blast. Then I've got a little Jabsco pump that shuts off at 50 psi. So it's then feeding pressure to my pressure washer, which I'll then use to blast onto the hole. Okay, so pressure wash with hole blast is done now. I could see it was washing off a lot of the residue from the sandblasting, a lot of the garnet. And now, theoretically, the steel shouldn't flash rust for a few days. So what it means, I'm gonna let it dry. It's getting on, but it's still quite sunny and quite warm. So I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna get as much epoxy primer as I can on to the good metal. Then tomorrow, hopefully I'll come in and we'll start welding up the little dodgy bits that I found and then I'll put epoxy primer on that. But the whole blast should give us the time we need to do that without it flash rusting. A really common question I was getting is why didn't you sandblast first? And the reason is because if you can see something's wrong, fix it first. Because you might find new things wrong when you sandblast, but it'll rust within two or three days. You know, you want that primer on straight away. So fix anything you can that you know is already wrong then sandblast, then use a product like hold blast to stop it rusting straight away, fix the new things you've found, and get the primer on as fast as you can. The epoxy primer is four to one, so I'm just gonna mix up a batch, see how far it gets me. It is tempting to mix the whole lot, but I think that's gonna be much more than I need. So I'll just use these tubs, which give you mixtures for four to one. So make up a batch, put it in my tray, and start rolling it on. So you can see we're up to the A line on the four to one. I'll add the hardener to the B, then I'm gonna add halfway up to that 10% mark with the thinners, just cause it's the first coat. This is the only place there was a hole that I hadn't actually caused through dodgy welding or anything. So I'll drill this entire section out here. We'll put one of our discs in. Now I noticed this when we first went up at Fenwick's. Uh, this is uh, another kind of transducer fitting that I cut off. I had time to cut it off, but I didn't have time to grind it back. So we'll grind that back. But what you may also notice is there's a, a big hit here the boat's had at some stage in its life and this is also pushed in as well. Looks like there's a bulkhead here, so it's kind of pushed in either side of the bulkhead. I wouldn't say it's normally a huge problem, but I am gonna mount one of my transducers here, it's my side scan transducers, and I want it sitting at the correct angle. So I may have to think about whether I grind this off, heat this area, try and push it out, or whether I simply fill it in some way so that the transducer sits at an equal angle to the one on the port side. I didn't paint the transom. Well, I did up high because it's good metal there, but lower down, it's got the most pitting. So I'm gonna do some pad welding here as much as I can. I think at some point I would like to replace the transom on this boat. I actually put the ultrasonic tester on some of the thinner sections and I've still got three mil of steel here. So it's not like it's a problem, but yeah, it's definitely on my sort of to-do list. Going on a little bit of a pad welding frenzy at the moment. These little two mil rods are burning really nicely and they deposit a really good amount of metal for the depth of these depressions. So to me, I could do some big arduous task of cutting this out. The steering's welded to it, you know, all the ribs are welded to it, all this sort of thing. Or I could sit outside practicing something that I want to learn and that I'm actually really having fun doing. And so often when people sort of go, you know, you're doing it the wrong way. I go, well, maybe it's the wrong way for you, but 
it's the right way for me at this point in my learning curve or whatever because this is a skill I want to get better at. Whenever you do a job, you optimise for something. You optimise for cost effectiveness, the, the end result, speed, time. I optimise for enjoyment. You know, I think fixing a boat's like the third rule of Fight Club. Always try your best and have fun. Oh, these are the rods I'm burning, by the way. Not sponsored or anything, I just bought them, but really happy with them. They're burning really nicely. Why don't I have some lunch with you? To to Alright, I've gone a bit nuts today and just pad welded every little depression in this whole transom. So now I'm just going to slap some epoxy on it to stop it rusting more and we'll deal with it next week. More to do but it'll do for now. The transom now I think sort of just looks pitted rather than really kind of eaten away by galvanic corrosion which I think was the case between the a stainless uh, rudder and you know the back of the boat all the corrosion to the back where the stainless sort of running gear was uh, just due to the anodes being gone I'm kind of happy now just to maybe use so I'm going to do another coat of epoxy then I can use the epoxy filler that Altex have supplied then we can also use a high build primer then we're going to have an undercoat then we're going to have our anti-foul so I'm thinking I'm going to kind of leave it as it is. All up I'd say I put about two kilos of metal back into the transom and you know I'm pretty comfortable with that. Definitely in areas where you could see where it was sort of coming around the corner here and I could see where the old world was. So I did a run up the old world, filler across it, then some more up it again to kind of give it the curve and you can kind of feel the strength coming back into the boat. So I'm pretty comfortable with, with the sort of the structural integrity of it now. Obviously all the framing behind the transom is still perfect, none of that's corroded in the slightest. So I think now I'll just do a little bit more work to get it aesthetically good and leave it at least for a couple of seasons. The things I'm focusing on doing 100% now are the things that are easy to do while the motor's out. If I enjoy the boat for a couple of years and go, yep, I'm loving this boat, I'm going to keep it, it's no brainer to replace that whole transom in a couple of years time. Whereas if it's something under the motor, I might go, oh God, I wish I'd done that properly while the motor was out. So this is sort of where I'm focusing my priorities. I want to get the electrics done, get the motor properly serviced, get the engine bay under the motor cleaned, painted properly, all that kind of stuff. The uh, fuel tanks done, because once the motor's back in, those things are much harder. This is going to be no harder to do on the hard stand next year than it is this year or the year after or even the year after that. Anyway, all right, well, take care, enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you next week. Bye.